Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. The Lord is great. He is greatly to be praised, greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come in the room. Let me know that you are here. You plan to be a participator in the word of God, not just a spectator. Good morning to you, Sister Sherilyn. God bless you. Come on in the room. Yes, yes, yes. Sister Sherilyn, look, my brace looks beautiful with this outfit I have on. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to you, Prophet Tressa, Sister Deborah. Good morning. God bless all of you. Come in the room. Yes, 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 the Lord is great. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer, and we'll get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you, O oh God, for who you are, Lord. Who are you? You are King of kings. You are the great I am, O oh God. You are the one, God, who created the heavens and the earth, Lord, and you prepared a place for us, Lord God, that we would, God, be healed and delivered, O oh God, Lord, that there would be no pain, God, no sorrow. We thank you, Lord God, that you are coming back again for a church without a spot or a wrinkle, O oh God, and we thank you, Lord God, that we are in preparation, God, for that. We thank you, Lord God, for continuing to bless us and heal us, O oh God, and, and God, make the way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in the lives of your people. And Lord God, for this word that's going to go forth, God, with power, we know, Lord God, that you will, God, and grab to the hearts of the people that they may be changed. And not just that they may be changed, oh God, but they may share with somebody else that somebody else might be healed, delivered, Lord God, and set free, God, from their uh, places, God, of addiction, affliction, Lord God, from their sin sickness, oh God. I know you can do it. And Lord God, we bless you for it in Jesus' name. We pray, amen, amen, people of God. Good morning to you, Sister Nancy. God bless you. Sister Nora, thank you, God, for, uh, for joining. Uh, thank you for allowing the Lord just to... Uh, Wake you up this morning and let you see this meditation. Your the Lord is great. He is better than that. Good morning to you, Sister Sherry. Yes, thank you for greeting the people of God. Sister Donna, good morning to you. This morning we're talking about uh, the games that people play. Playing games, um, uh, again, listen, we were doing some mom bonding. You, I like that. For, you, for those of you who have children, I know it's difficult, you know, for us sometimes to talk to our children about, you know, certain things. And especially in this time of pandemic, I encourage all of you, if you live with your children, if you don't, grandchildren, to try to spend some time with them because there's so much going on in, in their lives. There's so much depression going on in their lives now. Again, because good morning to you, Sister Rose, because they're not able to really reach out, you know, and be um, with their friends a lot. Sometimes they're isolated, they're alone a lot. So just reach out to them. Just try to do some things with them if you can. Um, another another mom bonding or mother daughter bonding. We were doing. My daughter wanted me to play a game with her, and um, she was playing a game on um, the PS4. So my son, when he went to school, he left the game system here for her to play, and um, she was playing a game. I can't remember which one it was, but it was either Mortal Kombat. Or modern warfare, maybe that's what it was. But the game, she says, Mom, just play this game with me. And I was playing my own game. I was playing a game called Makeover. And um, she was playing, I got to write some down because it, but I just, the Lord just gave me something about that Makeover game. But she was she was playing a game called Modern Warfare or Mortal Kombat or anyway. And she was playing the game. She was, she was shooting people and killing them. And they were in war. They were in a battle. And I said, Jada, I don't want to play that game because you're just killing people. She says, but mom, we in war. We're in war. It's not like we're, it's not like, um, you know, Grand Theft Auto where you just kill people on the street. She says, we're killing people in battle. We're in a battle. We're in a war. So it's okay, mom, that we kill people. But I, but I begin to hear the spirit of the Lord saying, you know, she's got one game. She's got a game system with one game on it. So all she knows to do is just to kill people. So I begin to, to give her a sermon and I begin to say, you know what? This is why you young people today, you have this in your spirit. You have killing in your spirit. You have murdering in your spirit because you're playing with these video games. And so, and so the mom, Bonnie, it continued because she, she listened. And then she began to speak to me. She says, Mom, no, but it's not about the video game. She says, it's about we just don't listen. She says, as teenagers, we don't listen because, you know, we, we play games or whatever. She says, but we don't listen. She says, we have our own mind about things. And she says, and although we play games, you know, on these video games, she said, we may be playing games with other people because we don't listen. And, you know, we, um, we, we have our own minds set about things. And, and, you know, we try to, you know, deceive our parents. And, and so it's not about the video games. She said, it's about us having our own mind. And as I begin to think about that thing, I said, you're right. I said, you know, just the games that people play, the games people play. And I was thinking about that as like I was playing a game also. I never I didn't play the game with her, but we were you know having a conversation about the game. 
And I was having a game, playing a game also. And I was playing a game called Makeover. And she said, Mom, you still playing that game? And I said, yes, I'm still playing this game. I've been playing the game for a while. I said, I've been on the same level. I've been on the same level of this game for three days. The game has been stumping me. And she says, you still playing it? I said, yes. I said, I can't get off this level. I, I'm staying in the same rut in the same game. She said, just play a different game. Play a different game. And the thing about games is sometimes you get stuck in a rut. That's what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. Sometimes you get stuck in a rut. And I was playing the same game. I was on the same level for three days. It's the games that people play. Sometimes we can't get out of situations. We can't get out of a thing. And Jada said, Mama, just play a different game. Get Put that game down. You know, she, she, so, you know it's like she said, listen, you're addicted to that game. Put delete that game off of your phone and play a different game because it looks like you're not going to get off of that level. Just get to a different game. And sometimes we play games, people of God, even with ourselves. We think that we're going to get done with it. We think we're going to get off of it, but we stay in the same rut. We don't move from it. We're staying in the same sin. Well, come on in here, somebody. We're staying, we're doing the same things over again, the games that people play. You know, and I, and I was looking at, you know, you look up, I looked up game, playing games with people. It's just a waste of time. But, you know, and I looked up in the Urban Dictionary, you know, the, it says to play games. When you play games, you don't like to play games with people. So the games that people play, it, it says to be evasive or deceptive. That's what Jada was talking about when she's talking about the teenagers, about the games. She said, Mama's not about the game that we play, the video games. It's about the games that we're playing in the world. Mess around with somebody or somebody's feelings. That's what we're talking about, to play games with somebody, not be direct, not to tell the truth. That's what the Urban Dictionary says about playing games with somebody. Come on in here, somebody. We play games with God. The Spirit was speaking. He said, listen, you two are playing these games, and she's playing the same game. She's killing folks. She's getting that in her spirit. You up here playing the same game over and over. You've been on the same level for three different days. You know, both of you are playing games. And he said, but, but the people of God play games with me. <laughs> and I said, help me, Jesus. What are you saying today? He says, you're playing games with me. He said, you play games, you're falling away. But he said, but you pretend as if you're my disciples. He said, but you're just playing games. He said, you're just wasting your time. You're staying on the same level. Come on here, somebody. You can't get off of the level that you're on because you're just playing games with me. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, it's time for us to stop playing games. Come on, and begin to get real with the Lord. It's time for us to stop playing these games. Come on here, somebody somebody and get real with what God wants to do in our life. There is a scripture in the word of God. <clears throat> there is a scripture in the word of God. It's found in Isaiah <clears throat> chapter one. And I'm going to read verses 13 through 17. I'm reading from a couple of different translations because I got really taken aback by what the Lord was saying. Sister Lula, he says, stop bringing meaningless offerings. He says, your incest is detestable to me. New moon, Sabbaths, convocations. He said, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals. He said, I hate with all my being. Uh, they have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, he says, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. I hear the Lord saying, stop playing games with me. Good morning, Sister Angela. I hear the Lord saying to us, Sister Nora, Stop playing games with me. He said, there's too much work for us to be doing. You're wasting your time. Listen, you're, you're not being truthful. You're being deceitful. He says, you're, you're doing things that doesn't make any sense to me. He says, you're getting things in your spirit that don't need to be there. I hear the Lord speaking to us this morning, Minister Hughes. He's saying, stop playing games with me. He said, listen, you may play games with other people. You may play games, listen, with your friends, your family members. You may play games with your husband, with your wife. You may play games, my God, with the man down the street. Come on, you may play games, my God, with the drug dealer, with the people that give you something that makes you feel good. He said, listen, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to stop playing games with me. I found that in the, in the message version. I wanted you to hear it in the message version. Because Isaiah 1, 13 through 17 says this. This is the message version. 
And it says, quit your worship charades. <laughs> Stop playing the games. Stop playing the charades. It says, I can't stand your trivial religious games. I'm sick of your religion, 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 while you go on sinning. When you put on your next prayer performance, he says, I'll be looking the other way. Oh, come on in here, somebody. He says, no matter how long or how loud or how often you pray, he says, I'll not be listening. He says, go home and wash up. Clean up your acts. Sweep your lives clean of your evil doings so I don't have to look at them any longer. Say no to wrong. Learn to do good. Work for justice. Help the down and out. Stand up for the homeless. Go to bat for the defenseless. Somebody put that text in the comments. Isaiah 1, 13 through 17. Because the Lord is saying to us, he is tired of playing games with us. Stop, stop your playing games. Jeremiah 6 says, I'm visiting the catastrophe on this people. The end result of games they've been playing with me. The Lord desires faithfulness from us, Sharice. He's tired of us playing games. Listen, we can play. Listen, I was doing some mind bonding. And me and my daughter were playing games. But we recognized though, that game that she was playing, that Mortal Kombat game, that wasn't real. The, 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 the warfare that we were in in that game wasn't real. But people of God, we're in a real battle. We are in real warfare. We're not in warfare with cartoon people, my God, and, and, and fake blood and bullets and guns. We're in a real, real warfare. The enemy is trying to take you out. And the Lord is saying, listen, I'm tired of you all playing games. Oh, come on and hear somebody. Come on and hear somebody. Tired of us playing games. Oh, glory to God. I know I went from yesterday, don't quit. Now I'm saying, my God, the Lord is speaking. He said, stop playing these games. Oh, my God. Some of us, we think that religion and Christianity and following Christ is just a game that we play. But it's not a game that we play. This is real, people of God. This thing is real. You know, all throughout the Bible... There were men and women of God, men and women of God playing games with God, playing games with him, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And yet we are doing the same thing. Y'all remember Adam and Eve. Oh, man, when when Eve, when Eve gave Adam that fruit, Adam said, Lord, Adam, Adam, at Lord said, Adam, where are you? That was in Genesis chapter three. He said, Lord, I heard your voice in the garden. He said, I was afraid and I was naked, so I hid. And the Lord said, Adam, man, I know you. Who told you? Who told you you were naked? It's just me and you and, and Eve out here. The Lord said, wait a minute. Did you eat of that, that tree that I told you not to eat from? And here come Adam playing games. Well, the woman that you gave me. The woman that you gave me, she the one that gave me of the tree and I ate it. And the Lord said, well, woman, what did you do? And the woman then said, she's playing games now. Well, Lord, it was the serpent. He deceived me and I ate it. Oh, come on and hear somebody. We're just like Adam and Eve playing games. Hey, glory to God. I see you. We're playing games. They couldn't acknowledge their sins. And they blaming each other. Eve blaming the serpent. Adam blaming Eve. And because of that blaming, listen, that was the beginning of the fall of man. We got to stop playing games with God. Because what happened? They were banned from the garden. Listen, they were separated from God. People, when we play games, when we blame somebody else. Listen, we are separated from God. We are separated from God. Come on in here, somebody. The Lord is saying, stop playing games with me. Stop. Don't play games with me. Remember 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 20 through 27. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. He said, he said look, he said, my master, he, he ran. He said, look, my master has spared Naaman, the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he bought. But as the Lord lives, Gaze, I said, I'll run after him and take something from him. That wasn't what he was supposed to do, playing games. 
And he went and stood before his master, Elisha, and he said, where did you go, Gehazi? And then Gehazi said, what? My servant didn't go anywhere. Gehazi playing games. He didn't go anywhere. And he said to him, did not my heart go with you? You know, it's like Elijah was saying to Gehazi, Gehazi, I saw you. It's like God knows. God knows what we do, but we still yet play games. He said, did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and, fe and female servants? Is it, is it, there's a time and place for everything. Hey, Zai, you, you know, the thing about it is, you know, the Lord promises us wealth and riches and he promises us great things. But yet, just like Gehazi, we try to get things with deceit. And we try to get, get things, you know, making a deal, getting a, getting a hookup, <laughs> playing games. But what happened to Gehazi? Elisha said, therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And when he went out of his presence, the leprous, he was uh, as white as snow, the Bible says. All for some money, playing games, taking advantage of people. Couldn't wait to be promoted. Couldn't wait for God to do what he needed to do. And because he couldn't wait, he was afflicted with diseases and curses. Listen, you playing games. Y'all remember Jonah? Jonah was playing straight, playing some games, wasn't he? Playing some games. Jonah was playing some games. The, it, listen, the word of the Lord came in Jonah. The Bible says in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says, arise, get up. Get up, Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Go, go there because that great city. Cry out against it because wickedness has come up before me. But what did Jonah do? Jonah was playing games, y'all. Jonah, Jonah was, didn't want the people of Nineveh to be delivered. How are you going to tell somebody? How are you going to tell God that you don't want somebody to be delivered? Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. You know, God just bowed. Y'all remember that. <laughs> but the Lord did what? The Lord sent a great wind to the sea. The Bible says there was a mighty tempest on the sea so the ship was broken up. <laughs> Verse 15 says, so they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea. <laughs> they said, look, Jonah, something's going on with you and your God. And we ain't got nothing to do with it. Jonah, you playing games. The man on the boat said, listen, Jonah, you playing games. You, you, you're playing games. The Lord prepared a fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah was moved away from the direction God was leading him. Playing games, Rachel. Playing games. And because of that, Jonah, he, he was miserable. When we play games with God, life does not turn out the way we want it to turn out. We play games. Come on and hear somebody. We get preoccupied with what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. When we play games with God, we invest our, our the resources that we have, get invested in the wrong things. Somebody, come on, anybody help me in here. The Lord is saying up in Isaiah don't play games with me. He said, listen, don't do that. Oh, y'all remember. Oh, I got, he said, I got to get out of here. Ananias and Sapphira. Play games with God. That was found in Acts chapter 5. <laughs> Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their possessions. Y'all remember, they sold a possession. They were supposed to give back the proceeds to the church, but they kept part of it. Playing games. Paying, they, they brought a certain part of it and laid at the apostles' feet, with what the Lord says. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? He said, man, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to play games like that, Ananias. It was yours. After it was sold, was it not your own control? Why did you conceive this thing in your heart? You didn't have to do that. Sometimes we do things, Sister Linda, playing games, and we don't have to. The, Peter is saying to a man, you did not have to do that. You have not lied to men, but you lied to God. Playing games, people of God, we lied to him. And Ananias, the Bible says, hearing these words fell down and breathed his last. The great fear came upon all those who heard these things. 
<laughs> you know, his wife came back and just told the very same lie. When we play games with God, we open our heart to the deception and the lies that Satan has for us. And what happens? We can prematurely die. Oh, come on here, somebody. I can give you all kinds of stories about the people in the word of God who are playing games with God. Playing games with God. There's so many things. My God. Playing games. But the Lord is saying, stop playing games. I'm tired of your games. People of God, we got to examine ourselves. The, the things that happen, my God, in real life, Things that happen in real life that really hit us, that 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 that, that, hit, that hurt us. I mean, we we're in a pandemic, people of God. And financial disasters can hit us. We got children out here that are rebellious, that are out here on drugs. We got they're out here selling their bodies. Listen, we've got men out here that are trying to steal our young girls and our young boys with this sex trafficking thing that's going on. We've got a lot of stuff going on. The Lord is saying, listen, you focus on that stuff. Stop playing games with me. And many times, my God, we try to play games. You know, the games that we have, let's make a deal. We try to make a deal with God. We try to bargain with God. Come on, it's extra God to do something in exchange for something that we would do. God doesn't have to bargain with us. We tell God, God, I'll, 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 I'll go to church, God, if, you, if you'll do this. I'll, God, I'll, I'll, stop. I'll stop drinking, God. I'll stop gambling, God. I'll stop doing this and that. I'll stop lying, God. I'll stop cussing. I'll stop cheating, God. If you do this, God doesn't work like that. God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a just God. He's a merciful God. You can't make a bargain. You can, let's make a deal. You can't make a deal with God. Come on and hear somebody. The Lord is saying to us this morning, stop playing games with me. And just like with Adam and Eve in the Bible, the Lord said, Adam, where are you? Many of us, many of us are playing hide and seek with God. We're hiding because we don't want God to see us. We're doing some things that we don't want God to know that we're doing when we don't even recognize. Just like Elisha told Gehazi, my heart is with you. God is everywhere at the same time. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. Come on, he's omniscient. Come on in here, somebody. He's omnipresent. Everything that you do, come on, the Lord is in it. Let's, let's just stop playing these games. Let's get real, my God. Stop playing the games, my God, because we feel like God is not there. He's not, we don't, he don't see us not being in the presence of, in, in his presence in our churches. We feel like he don't see us not praying. We act like he don't, he don't know, my God, that we're not reading our word. People, we are playing a dangerous game. A dangerous game. I thought um, Mortal Kombat, Modern Warfare, I thought that was a dangerous game, Rachel. But this game that we're playing with God, this is a dangerous game. This is a dangerous game. Because the playing hide and seek, you may never be found. You may never be found. Because you know what? The Lord is not lost. We're playing these games and it may just may backfire. It may backfire on you because you can't win the game. When you play the game, it's like the game I'm playing. You can't win a game with God. You can't win the game with God. It's like you're playing. Come on, when you, when you start playing games with God and you get out, way, you get out there away from him, you try, to, you try to leave away from his presence because you don't want to do what he's called for you to do. It's like the game that you're on the island by yourself and you got to do the survivor game where you're isolated. But when you get isolated, come on, that's what the devil wants. The enemy wants to get you by yourself. He wants to put you in predicaments or situations that you can't get out of. My God, but, but the Lord, it desires, come on, the Lord desires for you to be with him. The Lord, my God, wants you to be his servant. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be victorious. He doesn't want you playing games. He doesn't want you out there where the enemy is. Come on, the enemy, the Bible says, is, is lurking. He's looking, seeking whom he may devour. Just like a roaring lion. He's out there in the jungle. Come on, God, looking to, to, to take you out. But the Bible says, my God, in Mark chapter 10, Verses 42 through 45, it says, Jesus called them together and he said, not so with you. Whoever becomes great among you must be your servant. Whoever must be first 
must be slave of all. It says, but number 45 says this. Even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He's saying, listen, stop the games and do what it is that you've been called to do. And that's to serve, to serve, to serve those who are needy, to serve those who are less fortunate than you, to serve your community, to serve the, the mothers and the widows and the young children. The Lord says, I've got work for you to do. And he isn't playing these games. He says, I'm not going to bargain with you. He says, and he says, listen, it is not a game that we're, we're not in competition with one another. The thing about this is we're in this thing together. He says, matter of fact, I'm fighting this battle for you. I'm fighting it for you. He says, don't play games. He said, be honest with me. He says, you, he says, you can be sincere with me. You, can, you don't have to play games with me. Oh, my God. The Lord is looking for a committed relationship with you. He said, not one that is one-sided, not one that is dishonest, but he is looking for a committed relationship with you, people of God. Think about the games that you've been playing. What games have you played with him? You think about the games that you played when we were younger. They're not like these games these kids are playing right now, but there are different games. But what games right now are you playing with God? They're dangerous. They're dangerous. The thing about it is, you got to get out of those games. you got to find out the things that please God. What are the things that please God? Living for him. Loving for him. Living for God. Listen, it isn't hard if you, if you love God. Read the word of God to, let God, to show God that you want to be obedient to his will and to his way. That you want to bless the Lord at all times. And when you do that, the Bible says you will prosper. When you do that, when you meditate on the word of God day and night, the Bible says you will prosper. When I go back to Isaiah, the word of the Lord says, go home, wash up, clean up your act, get your lives clean. He said, listen, so I don't have to look at your mess any longer. The Lord says, I don't want to play your games with you anymore. Get your life in order. Learn to do good. He said, work for justice. Oh, come in here, somebody. I see you, Mr. Hughes. He says, listen, clean it up. Help the people that need help. Stand up for the homeless. Help the defenseless. You want to please God? You want to please God? You want to have some God bonding? God doesn't want to play games. God wants you to have an intimate relationship with him. He wants you to love him, my God, like he loves you. And he loves you, my God, unconditionally. Matter of fact, he loved you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross that we would be free. He don't want you to play games anymore, my God. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I know I may be preaching to the choir right now, but maybe I'm not. Because there are many right now. The Bible says, listen, the very elect is going to have a hard time. Many of us, my God, are playing games with God. We're not going to our churches and, and maybe we shouldn't go because maybe our churches aren't open, but we're not watching the Zooms. Wednesday nights, we're sitting at home in front of the television instead of sitting in, in front of the Bible study. Many times we're not reading our word and we're not praying to God. We're not helping those who need help. We're saying, listen, I need help myself. But listen, the Lord says, I will supply for you. We are blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. Many of us, come on, all of us, have another piece of bread to give somebody one of the pieces of bread that God can continue to pour into our bosom. He said, listen, when you give, he'll give to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. The Bible says, well, men give into your bosom. There's nothing that is too hard for God. But the Lord is saying, people, it's time to stop playing games. The games people play. The games people play. Let it not be you that are playing games with God. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, Lord God, that we, God, are not they that are playing the games of God. If we are, we ask right now that you forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, God, for when we didn't read our word and when we didn't pray. Forgive us, oh God, for when we pretended that we loved you, pretended, Lord God, that we loved the people of God. Forgive us, oh God, when we didn't go to our churches, God, and forgive us, God, when we didn't promote Christianity, God, among our peers. Forgive us, oh God, for God, when we didn't walk the way we needed to walk, Lord God. Forgive us for those things, Lord God. Help us, God, to walk in the way, Lord. And, God, and even as Isaiah says, Lord, God, help us, God, to go home and wash our faces, oh, God. And clean up our act, oh, God. 
That you don't have to see, God, the filth, God, and the seeing, God, among us, oh, God. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us, Lord God, that playing games, God, with you is not the way, oh, God. Thank you, Lord God, for even, God, even as we watch our online services, oh, God, that we, God, will get involved with our services, God. We will lift our hands, God. We will say thank you, Jesus, and we will give you the highest praise, God, when we say hallelujah to your name, oh, God. For, God, we recognize, God, there are consequences when we play games with you, oh, God. But, Lord God, when we do what you call for us to do, Lord God, we get rid of our evil deeds, oh, God. We move those things far from us, God. We stop doing the wrong things, oh, God. The Lord God, you, God, will bring victory to our lives. So we thank you right now for victory in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for victory for the people of God, Lord God, as they do what it is that you call for them to do. We thank you, Lord God, for this warning, oh, Lord God, and that we will be moved, God, closer and closer to an intimate relationship with you. And because of that, God, we know, God, that the enemies are defeated in our lives, oh, Lord God, and victory, God, shall reign and rule. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for coming to our rescue today. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. And bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. Listen, there are games people play, but don't you be the one playing games with God. I love you with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. Go in peace. Glory to God.